Welcome to Dice Camera Action, everybody. Yay! Yay! Six isn't dead. Everything is fine. <laughs> oh, no. Not joyous. Still dead. <laughs> it didn't Still happen. Dead. It didn't happen. Still dead. So previously, <laughs> I don't believe it. previously in the campaign, uh, Paulton, who was trapped in Castle Ravenloft by himself, uh, met Falcon, who tried to help him escape, but Falcon was shot out of the air and killed by Vampire Esmeralda who Paulton was able to charm with his suggestion spell and persuade her uh, to help him. And she did, uh, leading him back down to the fiery brazier, which he used to teleport himself out of the castle, presumably, hopefully, to the Amber Temple. Meanwhile, in the depths of the Amber Temple, uh, Strix, Diath, and Evelyn were confronted by a pack of Strahd's vampire spawn, and they destroyed uh, or, or dispatched with Barmy's help, four of them, and drove two others back out through a secret door in retreat. Uh, but uh, the vampire spawn were able to deal a crippling blow to the waffle crew uh, by sucking Strix's blood out of her body. And uh, when Diath uh, repelled up the wall um, to grab hold of her and she fell into his arms, he realized pretty quickly that she was dead. But probably not really dead. <laughs> probably fine. <laughs> Paulton, you materialize in a room. Um, and uh, there is some ambient light from somewhere high above you, uh, but the room is quite dark otherwise. Uh, very, very hard to see anything. What would you like to do? I would like to, um, so is, is it like, aside from the ambient light up top, is it just pitch black around me or can I make When you, it's pitch black around you. Uh, when you turn toward the light, you can just make out what appears to be, um, now this room you're in is quite large, uh, but uh, sort of set into one wall is a staircase that curls up the wall. Um, sort of, you're at the bottom of a shaft almost, uh, and this gold marble staircase uh, uh, curls upward, and the light seems to be coming from somewhere at the top of the stairs, which you can't see. Um, it's pretty high up, uh, but there's some gleam off of the marble. Um, the light seems to catch the staircase, and so it's, it's lit up dimly. Um, but uh, this room at the bottom of the staircase that you're standing in Apart from what appears to be some wreckage on the floor, you can't see more than maybe 10, 15 feet away and everything is dark. You do have the distinct impression, however, of a sort of palpable presence that isn't you. Okay. Uh, do you have a light source? I... Uh... I have candles. That you do. If you want to take time to light a candle, you may do so. Absolutely. All right. In that case, uh, uh, walking around with your little flickering candle light, you can see that the wreckage around your feet seems to be the remains of six old rotting wooden crates 
which must have contained a sizable amount of earth or dirt, because you can see mounds of the earth and dirt scattered about the floor. But wh whatever was in these crates has either been uh, released or broken free. Uh, you can also see that the walls glisten with an amber coating. And these amber covered walls are sculpted to look like tentacles that entwine around bas reliefs of kings, queens, pharaohs and sultans and myriad slaves. You also see that the room has three alcoves, deep set alcoves, one in the wall directly in front of you, one to your left and one to your right. And standing in each of these deep alcoves is a tall, rough block of amber, about the same size as a sarcophagus. Huh. Okay. So there's the staircase, there's the wreckage on the floor, and there are these blocks of amber um, in alcoves. The ceiling here is about 30 feet high. Okay. And you said I kind of feel there's like some other presence. Yeah. There, there's an uncomfortable feeling that you're being studied or watched. As you uh, pay closer attention to the sarcophagus, you can see deep within each one of them is what looks like almost like a black smear. Uh, like there's some oily black thing trapped in amber in each of these alcoves. Neat. Um, all right, I... I guess I'll, can I head toward the staircase? You sure can. Um, and the, when you look up, you can see the staircase curls up um, about 30 feet to what seems to be a candlelit room above you. Um, and as you cautiously make your way up the staircase, uh, you see the room above unfold before you. Uh, and uh, the, the room above has 20 foot high walls and a 30 foot high vaulted ceiling and covering the ceiling is a fresco that depicts angels being set ablaze in a hell. Uh, and against the walls of the room are 10 foot tall black marble bookcases. And on their shelves are hundreds of well-preserved tomes. You also see decorating the room are embroidered rugs, uh, padded chairs, and lit candelabras. Uh, like this is some sort of library slash reading room. Now, some of the angelic figures you see above you um, are bright and uh, no, have noble bearing. Others look to be little more than blackened corpses falling um, around the, this hellscape. Uh, but you don't see anybody in the room, uh, just the, these flickering candelabra. Um, oh, one other thing you notice is that in one wall of the room between two bookshelves, you see a section of the wall has opened up as though somebody found a secret door and left it open. There don't appear to be any other exits. Interesting. Uh, so all I really see to carry on is this left open secret door then? Uh, yeah, that it seems to be uh, as, as you gaze around the room, which is basically a square room uh, with the staircase uh, set into one wall. Uh, other than going back down the marble stairs, the only other exit appears to be this dark cavity um, that's opened up in one wall. You see dust and a few cobwebs hanging in uh, a few cobwebs hanging in the dusty darkness just inside the door. Okay. Um, and the sea and the the secret door has opened outward. Mm. All right. Um, can I uh, cast invisibility on myself and head in that secret door? Yes. Um, let me just check the spell here to look up one quick thing.
Okay. Very good. Uh, make a perception check. Uh, 15. Okay. Uh, as you utter the um, words of the spell and use your simple gestures uh, to invoke its magic, your eye catches something on the ceiling fresco. And you see that two of the burnt angels aren't actually part of the fresco. They appear to be blackened, undead humans, spider climbing on the ceiling. Great. And as you cast the spell, you see them scramble across the ceiling and then drop down into your midst, at which point you disappear. <laughs> okay. Well, that was close. <laughs> Strix. <laughs> Dead Strix. Yes, everything is fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Strix, you are surrounded by mist. Great. Uh, of course I am. And as you look around, it's just sort of thick, silvery, billowy, gray mist everywhere. Um, but somewhere in the distance, you can hear very faint cause of crows or ravens. And I'd like you to make a perception check. Can I throw a fit first? <laughs> okay. I'm so mad. Yeah, she just throws a fit and she just like jumps up and down, stomps yeah. on whatever is real mm -hmm. happening. Uh, that's an eight. Okay. Uh, you, uh, yes, you throw a fit and you can see <laughs> the ground is, is like earth, uh, but spongy soft. Oh, uh, you can see some moss and, and sort of dead growth. Uh, you can also make out what appear to be, uh, through the fog, the dark grayish forms of what might be trees. All right. And rocks, well, but they're so, they're so, they're, they're pretty faint. I'm just going to start walking towards these trees. Okay. I don't have much of a choice unless I just sit there crying yeah. on the ground, which she yeah, really, really wants to do. There's literally any direction you could possibly go, but you pick a direction, you sort of head off in, toward it. Um, and you can make out just distant, in addition to the sounds of crows, uh, not only do you hear your footfalls, but you also hear kind of the soft, crunchy uh, um, footfalls uh, of other people. Oh, come on. <laughs> Uh, um, but your your perception score is not that great. You no. can't see very well into the fog. So although you can hear sort of the cracking of twigs and the crunching of leaves from other feet, uh, you have no indication really of where they're coming from or even how many of them there are. And she call out like, hello? Hello? Uh, when you call out, you hear a young voice, a child's voice. Oh, I don't not too like far that. up ahead. <laughs> say back to you hello oh this is horrible <laughs> uh, oh god okay uh, and then oh. it says are, are are you a monster that's to be debated but uh no i'm just gonna go with no and and you sort of uh, hear this noise like <laughs> uh, yeah. Is there something wrong? I'm scared. I'll come help you. She'll run towards the voice if she can find it. Yes, and uh, you can see underneath uh, this dead tree in the mist is a young boy with his arms curled up around his knees, uh, pressed very close to his chest, and he looks up to you with a sallow face. Oh, no. He looks almost uh, sickly, and you can see red rings around his uh, young eyes. And he says, I was sick, but I'm not sick anymore. Uh, and I just, I'll just walk up to him like, hey, little, <laughs> hey, little, little human friend, what were you sick with? I don't know. But you're, you're okay now. But why are you here? This place seems like a, not a good place. I woke up here. Oh, oh so did I. <laughs> I'm just going to try and like pat him on the head. Like, All right. He says, who are you? Uh, my name is Strix. Nice to meet I, you. I, and he says, are those horns? 
Uh, yes, you, yes, they are. Yeah, yes. Here's a, I, oh, can I look for Stinky? Do I have Stinky or no? Uh, no, Stinky is not with you. No, I was going to show him Stinky, but I'm like, You well, reach I... into your pockets and there's, there, yeah, Stinky's gone. Oh, no, I don't have my little friend. Worse, you have no snacks. I, do I have no snacks? <laughs> <laughs> uh no you have your snacks oh whew. all right so i'll give i'll give him a snack okay um yeah he he takes it and begins munching on it oh good i can at least give him that but he's the only person i see around here do i see any of the crows i heard or make another perception check well i'm not throwing a fit this time so it might be better yeah oh yeah 19 uh uh, you cannot discern the location of the crows. They're far away and sort of all over this dead wood um, that you're that you're in with this young boy. Uh, so nothing to help there. But in the mist, you can see forms. Um, they appear human, but many of them are sort of incomplete. Like you see what appears to be just a pair of walking gray legs. And they're just made out of mist. And another one appears to be a woman, quite old, <laughs> hunched over. And she's just sort of drifting uh, around aimlessly, almost blindly, reaching out through the mist. And you see that um, half of her is just completely faded away. And the other half is virtually colorless. She looks like some sort of misty ghost. Um, is there any way that I could maybe discern if I'm on a different plane? Uh, that would require an arcana check. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay. I'm see if I can, if maybe I've seen something similar to this before. Yep. Uh, a 14. Uh, you haven't seen anything like this before, uh, but something sort of triggers in a in your in your childhood memories of uh, sort of a fear, um, a ubiquitous fear of. Uh, becoming lost in the mist. Hmm. Uh, and you begin to suspect that maybe you were either transported or delivered into the mists of Ravenloft. Right. I'm assuming I know that I died. <laughs> you are, you, you can probably at this point piece that yeah. together. Yeah. So I have died. I'm in a bunch of mist. This yeah. kid is, I'm just going to ask the kid, do you, you remember anything else? Anything at all? Maybe why you and I are solid? Like, I'll touch him to make sure he's solid. Like I'm kind of <laughs> being weird and just like okay. slapping him a little bit. <laughs> yeah, he appears to be solid. Um, and uh, he says, I, I don't know. I just got here. Ugh. Well, you can stay with me. Come on. Come on, little, little bird. Okay. We'll just you. You, uh, you pick this uh, kid up, uh, he gets up to his feet. Uh, he's kind of wobbly and frail, uh, but you grab him by the hand. All right, I'll ask his name too. What's your name, little thingy? Jesper. Jesper? Uh -huh. I, oh, that's good. I don't think I've heard that before, which is also probably good. Cause to, to say, and I don't know how we're gonna get out of here. I mean, everything's fine. <laughs> everything's fine, little friend. <laughs> Jesper. <laughs> okay. And what do you do once you take him by the hand? Um, just look around, I guess. Do I see anything yeah. else? I mean, as you sort of uh, casual, just sort of slowly move about, you can see there aren't very many, but occasionally you come across like a drifting, misty specter. Um, and sometimes the figure is formed enough that you can sort of see a face and it might look at you with sort of an elongated expression of woe and or terror, um, uh, but then pays you no mind. Uh, other cases, you see what appears to be just a vaguely human-shaped movement through the mist, but really no form or substance whatsoever. Uh, it's like different people brought here um, uh, seem to have different compositions, and you begin to surmise that maybe the longer you spend here, the less real you become that was that was what i was worried about yeah <laughs> so I, I don't recognize any of these faces i haven't seen them in Baroque. no no um um well actually let me think uh i'll let you make a one more perception check right, cool. and i'll assume you're probably spending a fair amount like a couple hours wandering around great my, my hands or so it, 
or so it might seem to you. All right, uh, 15. Um, you do actually see what, a, um, uh, you do see, you do see somebody, uh, that looks kind of familiar, um, and you can't put your finger on it until you sort of quickly move in that figure's direction to sort of get a better look. And you kind of come up behind them and turn in front of them so that you can see them because uh, you were kind of coming at them from the back. And when you look, uh, you can see that it is the young boy who tried to murder you and your friends in the woods. Oh, I remember that real well. Yeah. Yeah. Can I, can I, you can see he like still got sort of a, he still got sort of a bluish cast to his skin where he was frozen to death by your spell. <laughs> oh, hey, crazy face. Come on. I'm like raising my hands in front of him. Oh, yes. uh, and he sort of, he, he doesn't even acknowledge you um, at first. And then there's like, he does this sort of slow double take and looks at you and uh, you can just see the horror in his oh. face. His eyes grow wide and his mouth opens wide. And just like a scene in Invasion of the Body Snatchers, he just sort of raises a finger at you. Immediately, Jesper just grabs hold of you tightly because he's terrified of this frigid apparition. I'm just going to hold him close and just be like, yeah, you know what, you're, that's not, it's not good. Let's yeah. just keep walking. Goodbye. And, you can, and you can see that this uh, specter that you have agitated uh, doesn't have any feet. His legs just sort of trail off into the mist. Interesting. All right. Hey, Jesper, uh, Keep your eyes open, because uh, we got to get out of here. Okay, okay. If you see anything, like a shimmer or anything, or, you know what? I'm just going to start yelling. I'm just going to start yelling. So, <laughs> so I just start yelling, like, hey, anyone want to make a make a bargain? Or, a, you know, I, I have some snacks. Or it, anyone out there? Anyone at all? DF? <laughs> is, her corpse is dead silent in your arms. I'm upset. <laughs> uh, now, currently, it's just it's just you and Evelyn and Barmy standing in the wreckage of this room. Uh, you can see the smoldering corpses of the last two vampire spawn that Evelyn killed with her radiant axe. Uh, I pick Strix up under the arms and try to set her on her feet. Like, it's okay. <laughs> this no. weekend at Bernie's <laughs> no, I know she'll come to in just a minute Eva, no. I'm sure she's fine <laughs> Exothanter says my memory is mostly gone but there might be a way to bring her back of course there is what is it I, I, I believe you Barmy the vestiges one of the vestiges might be able to grant you the power to raise the dead. The vestiges being the evil things down over there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, not optimal. Maybe the Abbey, where we had so much luck with you, Dia. Look. It only works because I practically tricked him. What do you mean? You know what? Not important. I was, I was a ghost and possessing people. Don't worry about it. Uh, I lay Strix back down, but I like cradle her head in my lap and I get Stinky and Juniper because Juniper has been hanging out with Strix this whole time. Right. And I yes. put them, you know, let them ride on my shoulders together. Okay. I think they're probably friends right by now. Yeah, probably. Yep. It might even be dating. Who knows? <laughs> All right. He says, I wish I could be more helpful. Me too, Barmy. He says, I do too. Not, he says, the vestiges are powerful ancient beings. Well, if we were hypothetically to uh, ask one of them to bring her back to life, what would what would that process be like? Do you think? No, they can't do that. They give gifts. 
Well, if we ask them for the gift of Strix's laugh back, would that work? Perhaps, but you must make contact with them. You must, I don't remember. You must do something. Maybe if you think real hard, you can remember. He says, you must, you must, you must reach, reach out to them. So, how? Strix, uh, Death will uh, lift Strix up into his yep. arms and yep. start making his way over towards the Burisong sarcophagi with spooky, terrible tendrils coming out of it. Yeah, so that that is in. Um, so to get there from here, you have to go through the secret door that the vampire spawn fled through. They did fly. Fl- okay, so they did run that way. Uh, they did run back that way, and that take you back to the library, which has all the books in it and a spiral staircase that descends to the room with the amber sarcophagi. Okay. And uh, uh, Barmy says, that room contains three of the most powerful vestiges. There are others throughout the temple. If those ones do not offer gifts to your liking. But I can't remember the command words. Okay. Evelyn, stay close. Those other vampires might still be nearby. I mean, uh, these vestiges, they're probably not like that evil, right? Like, they're probably just... Oh you know. no, they're misunderstood <laughs> by many. I would think so. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure they're fine. <laughs> oh, yes. Evelyn, no. <laughs> yes. You would do well to accept their gifts. I mean, really, when when true lat is brought into the world, it, it is good no matter where it comes from, you know, mostly, I would yes. say. And you can't have light without darkness. What what was... um? Ugh, shut up, Barmy. Evelyn, come on. Well, all right. Talk to you later, Barmy. Farewell. Don't forget us. Farewell. <laughs> Farewell. Why are you whispering? I'm still right here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see Diaz disappear into the secret door. I follow Diaz. Yeah, there's a After, short... We'll be fine. We'll have Strix with us next time. Bye. <laughs> there is a short, dark hallway filled with cobwebs that leads to another secret door that is open. Um, and when you, uh, well, I'll let you, uh, shortly before you get there, Paulton, uh, these two vampire spawn drop onto the floor. One's, uh, used to be a man and one used to be a woman, but they're sort of filthy dressed in tattered armor. Uh, they look like they may have been former adventurers, but now they're just sort of gaunt shriveled with red gleaming eyes and they landed in your midst and they have a vague sense of where you are, but it's clear they can't quite see you. I'd like you to roll initiative. (laughs) <laughs> okay oh but we add to that so four <laughs> <laughs> a mighty four. Oh god all right so uh as these vampires spawn um they basically uh attack your space and and they try to lash out at you uh, taking wild swings with their sharp claws. Uh, they have disadvantage on their attack roll because you are invisible. The first one, oh, that would have been a crit, but now it becomes a 16. And your armor class presently is 13. Yeah. Um, so it takes a swipe at you and very fortunately for it, uh, cuts into your flesh. And uh, when it does that, uh, you take eight points of slashing damage. Oh, God. And obviously, uh, um, I don't remember if you had any damage from before. Uh, you did take some damage from that fall. Um, uh, and I haven't healed since then, have I? Correct. So, <laughs> 
Um, Mom, please don't also die. <laughs> we don't know where you are. Was that, that, how much damage was that? Eight. Oh, how interesting, because that's exactly how much HP I had left. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, so, DF and Evelyn, I'd like you to make perception checks. Dear sweet baby Luthander. Yeah, now's the time to start praying again. Yeah, I perceived the fuck out of it. <laughs> 24, bitch. Nice. Bring it on, Chris Perkins. Come on, hot dice. Hey, your shit no more. Dang it! That's like uh, That's six. Okay, uh, DF, as you're uh, carrying Strix through this cobwebby passage and the cobwebs are getting stuck in her hair and stuck on her horns. and so She looks about normal, right? She looks about normal. It's, you're just refreshing your cobweb quota. And then uh, you hear this uh, from the room ahead of you, this thump, sort of a, 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 a what sounds to, to your acute ears as somebody or something being knocked to the floor. I thought you said cute ears, like you were revealing yeah. that he had like adorable ears. Well, he does have very adorable ears. Oh my gosh, so cute. Yeah. The tiny. <laughs> and and DF, as you recall, is like, you know, 18 years old still. I know, that's what I was thinking. He's like, you know, young and adorable. Uh-huh. So you, you sense, uh, based on the noise you heard, uh, that there's there's some some strange shenanigans in the room ahead. Okay, I mean, I kind of put a hand up to stop Evelyn and we like kind of stop our tracks. Yeah. Uh, is there something nearby that I can... Uh, safely lay Strix's body onto? You could, uh, basically, there's no furniture in this tiny little uh, hallway crawl space, but you can set her up against the nearby wall. Okay, yeah, I'll like sit her <laughs> like, uh, against the wall. Maybe maybe nearby the cobwebs. Shoot okay. Me. All right, and with that, pull out the short sword, uh, kind of motion Evelyn to also get her weapon ready. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to stealth my way forward towards where I saw that noise. All right. Uh, when you get to the open secret door and you look into the library, you can see a very odd scene, actually. Uh, you see two the two vampire spawn who fled are standing about 10 feet away from the door, uh, but they're both looking down at the floor. But you're not sure what they're looking at because there's nothing there. Okay. I look back at, uh, at Evelyn. I, I kind of do some... I do some hand motions just seem like. <laughs> <laughs> and I run in. Jump the vampire spawn! No, no, no. <laughs> she okay, runs like... in. I'm staying hidden. <laughs> okay, I understand. Uh, I'd like the two of you to make initiative rolls. All right. Please don't roll a one. Oh, dang. 20. Wow. Okay. 22. Okay. Oh, not quite a 20, but 19 plus 4 is 23. We're so hot right now. Things All are right. looking up. Someone has to be. Yeah, oh so God. DF, the library room is lit by candelabra, but they throw lots of shadows and things about the room, so it's not brightly lit area. Um, do you want to stay in this hall with Strix, or do you want, since you're technically first in the initiative, do you want to move out into the room? Uh, am I capable of stealthing my way into the room to uh, get yeah. closer to them while staying hidden? Uh, you believe so, particularly since they are not fixed on you. They're sort of not looking at the door whatsoever. Great. Okay. So I'm going to do that and wait for Evelyn to engage so I can set myself yeah. up for a six sneak attack. All right. Um, as you do that, you can see the two vampire kind of craning down and looking down. And one of them actually taps something with its pointed claw. Uh, it, like it tries to tap the floor, but doesn't get there. It hits something that's clearly invisible um, and starts to sort of feel find out where its neck is. <laughs> Vampires are weird. <laughs> uh, and, and, and they, I don't care. Else. Whatever you're touching on the floor, I'm just going to kill yeah. you. Uh, and the other one seems to be reaching around as well, trying to suss out uh, what they've found uh, while you sneak into position. Meanwhile, Evelyn, uh, shortly after DF moves, slinks out into the room. You come uh, full rage into the room, gleaming as usual, uh, and charge these mofos. Surprise, right? Uh, yeah. So does that give me advantage? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> Look, yeah, well, uh, they certainly aren't paying attention to you. Now, I just want to, now they are, they technically have gone uh, in combat. So I'm just looking something up here. Um, 
Yes, yeah, so right here they instantly die, and we're okay. It's yeah, it's so no, weird. But no, I it's rule, right. Well, it's just a regular attack for you. Oh come on! Nothing for attack. Nothing for surprise. Well, you've got your you know awesome dice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it won't, it won't let you down. Sixteen. That's a hit. Hooray! And I want to again expend a spell slot for divine smite. Please. Okay. Sounds good. Let me get my D eight. Both of these vampire spawn have been wounded. All right, so we're doing uh, your friend is D8, dead, which is five plus. Uh, actually, the vampire spawn have regenerated now, so they're up to full. Never mind. Even the ones that I hit with divine smite before. Yeah, it shuts down their radiation or their radiation, their regeneration for a while. But you've been out of combat long enough that uh, they've yeah. regained their hit points. Well, poo. Well, anyway, so I've got one D eight for damage, two D eight. <laughs> For Divine Smite, plus 1d8 per spell level, okay. which I don't have any extra, right? Right. And then 1d8 for Undead. Okay. So that's total 4d8. The first one is 5, plus 3 is 8, plus 5 is 13, plus 2. Excellent. It takes all of that, and it's a crippling, wounding blow uh, that causes her to shriek out in pain and recoil from you in abject horror, at which point DF... Yeah, you yeah. appear. You leap out of the shadows ha! from behind a chair and pounce on this. Poor... I won't be nearly as good because it's a regular ass short sword. Right, uh, but you do have your sneak attack. Okay, and then I got it. Do I? Okay, yeah. This is just a normal attack roll. Um, and uh, uh, uh yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, well. And... Or... I'm guessing, I'm asking if I have an advantage for being yes. unaware. Okay. Yay! Oh, shit. Uh, 19. Well done. Yes. Uh, well, they weren't great rolls. Chris, I have a second attack. I forgot again. Oh, yes, please. Bring it. Yes, thank you, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this time it's 15. That's going to hit. Yay! Jared. Divine Smite again. Uh, mine was also 15. Okay. Of regular sneak attack damage. Got it. <laughs> okay. I'm yes. Divine Smiting. Your, your weapon meets resistance as it strikes the vampire's flesh, but you do pierce it uh, and uh, cause it to buckle and you kind of hear its spine crack in some unfortunate horrible way my favorite place to stay at right in the spine yep i did 17 all righty uh the two vampire spawn uh, caught off guard and well aware of your uh <laughs> Your, your power and your strength and the fact that you destroyed four of their companions, uh, they use their actions to disengage. Um, you now, uh, they will still provoke uh, from you, DF. One of them will. Oh. As she disengages from Evelyn, Great. she can't disengage from you. Okay. So... So you may make an opportunity attack. All right. Oh, she'll do that. Is she still within an ally, um, next to an ally within yes. five feet? Yes. Right. So that, that's the one. Don't worry about it. Okay. Uh, the two vampires uh, retreat from you. They go um, toward the staircase and sort of fling themselves over the railing uh, onto the back wall of the staircase <laughs> and begin to scuttle down the wall like spiders, disappearing from your line of sight. Gross. Uh... I think I probably follow them. Okay. Because I don't know that there's anything here. Well, it's funny. As you uh, rush toward the stairs, you don't get more than two steps before you literally trip, <laughs> almost trip over something invisibly. <laughs> um, so uh, just, make a, just make a fairly straightforward dexterity saving throw um, to see. I hope I fall. Yeah. <laughs> just save from Pratt fall. I, yeah. actually, yes. uh, I actually get a five. Okay. <laughs> All right, so yes, you, you sort of fall on top of whatever this invisible thing is. And I know immediately what it is after that. <laughs> uh, yeah, you have a pretty good idea. And Paulton, I need you to make a death save for me, which is just a flat D20 roll. All right. Oh, fuck. 
16. Okay, so that's one success. Um, one success toward the path of stabilization. Uh, yes, so it's pretty obvious now uh, to you, Dieth, and you, Evelyn, that there is an invisible body on the floor and it's probably your buddy, Paulton. Would it still be invisible even if he was like kicked? <laughs> Yeah. Or is yeah. that? Oh. Well, um, let me let me double check that. Okay. Um, the invisibility expires if he attacks or casts another spell. Okay. And there is a fixed time limit to when it expires naturally, which I think is one minute. What about dies? Dies <laughs> <laughs> not conscious. Well, that wouldn't be nearly as funny, would it? It's um, funny this way. Yeah. Oh, it's up to one hour actually. Oh, shit. Um, so yeah, it it only ends for the target if it casts a spell or attacks. Um, uh, otherwise, yeah, he's he's still invisible. I immediately just know in my heart, and from the fact that I yeah. fell, you fell on his bagpipes too. So there yeah. was this. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> <sound. laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I my first reaction is I like wrap my arms around whatever invisible part yeah. of him I'm nearest. And yes. Just, pause it, pause it. And then I remember he's as soft and squishy as he always has been. <laughs> But then I remembered that, like, that kind of weird disturbance in the forest I felt, and that, like, he was, we thought he we had him once before, and he turned into water, and I suddenly, like, let go and kind of get in a more defensive stance, and I looked okay. at the, uh, like, I think this is Paulton, or something that was once like Paulton. So, <laughs> thinking that it's, Dolph, uh, that it's not Paulton, DF's uh, first reaction is, to hell? I mean, I don't know. It, I don't want to get tricked again. I can't get, I can't get hurt like that again. But it feels a lot like I remember Paulton feeling, in my heart, and in my body. Paulton, are you there, buddy? <laughs> you get no response. Um, uh, Paulton, make a second death save. <laughs> that would be a six. Oh, that would be your first failure. What if you poke him with something? Will it make him stop being invisible? Nope. Well, the vampires were poking him earlier. I saw that. I had no yeah. idea what it was. Yeah, poke him. Oh my god, the vampires. Uh, Evelyn, help him. Help him what? Recover his units of well-being. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, uh, I, like, with reticence, reach down and lay on hands just for, like, like, Five points. Okay, so uh, Paulton, you are up to five hit points and no longer need to make any death saves, which means you are conscious again. Uh, when your eyes flutter open, you are lying on uh, a rug uh, with your blood on it. Um, and uh, Evelyn is above you and Diath a few paces off to one side. And of course, this is the first time you've seen your friends since you were uh, uh, knocked out and hauled off to Castle Ravenloft. Do we see him or is he still on invisible? He is still invisible. Oh. Um, Did it work? <laughs> I'm standing there just kind of like this, like. <laughs> so what do I need to do to stop the invisibility? Uh, so... Um, uh, you can cast another spell, or you can uh, attack something. Are those uh, yeah, dudes still nearby? Uh, you see no sign of the vamp of the of the uh, horrible, horrible vampire spawn. Okay, I'm just gonna be like, thanks. <laughs> When he does that, I like jump back and shriek. <laughs> <laughs> Again, to hell. I swear by the light of Lathander, if you are yet another impersonator of Paulton, I will smite you. Is there a ghost, Paulton? <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> These are all valid concerns your friends have, Paulton. <laughs> yeah. I can't figure out how to, how, to, how to stop it. I can't just like stop the spell. I can't just be like, whoosh, done. Uh, technically, no. Not this spell. Okay. Um, if you are Paulton, tell us something that only Paulton would know. 
everything is horrible and um, um, uh, I really could use a drink. <laughs> oh my god, Paulton! <laughs> Evelyn's still not convinced, but she's like seeing where the like voice is coming from and she's trying to like, where's your face? Let me touch your face. Like <laughs> trying to find his face while he's talking. Can I cast suggestion on her and be like, yes, I'm Paulton. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh yeah, and uh Evelyn can make a saving throw. Uh it's 16. a wisdom. Oh, wisdom is a 17. Okay, you succeed. So I am not suggested? You are not suggested. He casting a spell, so his invisibility is broken? And his invisibility is broken, so he appears. I shriek again. (laughs) (laughs) Because my hands were like this close to his face, and then he appears. And you can see that he's got uh, some sort of mostly now healed up scratch marks from a vampire wound, but it it also looks like he's had a bit of a rough road. He's wet um, because he was out. (laughs) He was out in the rain, uh, so he's kind of drenched. Water monster again. Yep. What? <laughs> Don't try to fool me. I've seen these tricks before. Just because we love Paulton with all of our heart into the depths of our being and from our head to our toes doesn't mean well, that we'll fall for this trick again. Don't speak for all of us. I, I look at all of us. I look at the, I'm just like, all right, so Evelyn's still herself, so that's cool. Uh, from down below, in the chamber below where the vampires fled, you hear a sort of loud voice say, Back to the grave with you! In the name of the Morning Lord! Yes! Back to the grave with you in the name of the Morning Lord! No, evil you, hear, you hear uh, howls, uh, screams of pain, and a kind of a whooshing noise. Almost like a fireball going off. Okay. Well, I don't know what that was, and I'm scared, and we don't have much time. I'm going to go back and get Strix's body. I her back up and continuing making my way down towards the sarcophagi. Hold up, Strix is what now? Yeah, Paul, can you see uh, uh, DF come out of the secret, ton- uh, secret door uh, carrying uh, Strix's lifeless body? No problem at a time, Paulton. What? I just woke up. What are we doing? <coughs> uh, Evelyn's just kind of staring at him like this. <laughs> just observing okay. him keenly. Can I help you? You can help me be sure that you are Paulton. Okay, that seems like a later thing. <laughs> <laughs> Evelyn, Paulton, Paulton, I believe you. Stay close. Stay nearby me, just to make sure those vampires don't come back. We need it. Okay. We have to move closely. There's no time to hesitate. Let's move. I have my battle axe and I hold it med- like while still looking at Paulton like this. I follow. Okay. Um, as you make your way down the marble, the curling marble steps that descend into the uh, lower level you can see, uh, uh, and this is the room you just came up from, Paulton. Uh, there are the three amber sarcophagi. Uh, there is also what appears to be a smoldering pile of ash that wasn't here earlier, Paulton, and earlier. The rest of you haven't, haven't seen this either. Now, D. Athens, uh, Evelyn, you see for the first time that the old wooden crates that used to be here have all been busted open and their dirt is scattered hither and thither across the floor. It is among this wreckage that you see the smoldering ashes of what, and the bits of armor that one of the vampire spawn was wearing. Of the other vampire spawn, you don't see anything, but you recall that there were some narrow cracks in the walls that led to that treasury. <clears throat> right. Off in that direction, you can kind of hear a ruckus. Um, Uh, but currently this room with the sarcophagi is uh, empty of occupants except for you guys. Okay. I heard someone invokes the name of Lathander, and if there is someone else here in service of the Morning Lord, they would likely be a good ally. It could be another Morning Lord. What other Morning Lord? <laughs> Look, just head over that way. Make sure no one comes in just for a little bit. 
All right. So I go to like the door where the ruckus is happening, but I stay like in earshot of my friends. Yeah, when you walk over to the the fissure in the wall, the crack in the wall, you know that it goes uh, through stone um, about uh, 10 feet before breaking into the treasury. And as you recall, the treasury had these sort of piles of treasure about the floor. Um, within that room, you can hear what appear to be uh, sounds of combat. Oh, fuck. I hear fighting. <coughs> that, that, I don't want to go to that. <laughs> All right. So, um, and DF, DF, you're sort of uh, in the room now. Um, uh, Evelyn's watching the the cracks in the wall. Um, Paulton is next to you, and you see that the amber sarcophagi are pretty much as you had left them. Okay. Do you so, think Barmy might be in trouble? Should we go check on him? Not my concern. <laughs> so I'm, I'll gently place Strix back down onto the ground. Okay. And then uh, stand back up. Uh, then just kind of loudly proclaim to the room or the sarcophagi sarc- that are in here. <laughs> I I wander as he's doing this like a little bit out of the room to see if I can see what's happening. Sure. I barely know what's yeah. happening. And uh, Paulton, uh, are, what are you doing? If anything. Mm. Uh. What's what's DF doing? He's a, he's just set Strix down on the floor and it seems like he's about to do something. I, I yes uh, say quite loudly to the room. I seek a pact. Okay, I'm gonna take maybe a few steps. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, uh, DF, uh, you say, I seek a pact, and uh, uh, there is no perceivable response. Damn it. What else? Is there anything else you'd like to say or do? Uh, Shit. Army said something about words. If it came alive earlier, we said something. Roll for remember check. (laughs) I don't know if I had that in my memories anywhere. Mm. Um, I don't think that they, when we said the words, I don't think we knew what the words were. We just said, I repeat the words that Barmy said. Well, Barmy said things to stop the, the statues. But I don't think that has anything to do with the, uh, right. with the sarcophagi. I walk up to Strix's body. Okay. I kneel down. Yeah. I put my hands on her shoulders Uh and I chant, stop being dead. (laughs) (laughs) I tried everything. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll try again. Okay. Do you say exactly the words you said before? No, I'll say, I seek your gifts. Uh, you gain, you, you become aware that you are now being studied, uh, that they, that some, something, something or some things have fixed their attention upon you. Okay. But they seem to be waiting. Don't like that. I'm just going to assume you're listening. I seek, I have a simple demand. Whichever one of you gives the power or gives me the ability or can do it upon yourself to return Strix to the living as she was before her death. No weird curses or whatever bullshit you guys would do. Uh, Whichever one of you can do that, I seek audience. Uh, The vestige within the sarcophagus of one of the alcoves seems to draw your attention to it through some power you know not what Uh, but when you turn to confront it there is movement there that wasn't there before okay like it is kind of reaching out to you in a way all right i'll start 
kind of stepping towards that one. Yep. You can make an insight check. <laughs> I'm really scared. <laughs> I'm scared too. Uh, 19. It wants you to touch it. Okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, I'll get to keep stepping toward that sarcophagi. Yep. Uh, Evelyn, yeah. uh, oblivious to what Diath and Paulton are doing, you kind of make your way through the fissure, the crack in the wall that leads to the treasury. Uh, you appear at the back of an alcove. When you look into the chamber, you see an old man, probably barely five foot seven, five foot eight, uh, with what appears to be a silver sword cane, thrusting and attacking and beating down a the vampire, the last vampire spawn. Does he say anything? Uh, uh, you can see he's also got a holy symbol clutched in his free hand, and it appears to be the holy symbol of the Morning Lord. Hooray! And uh, he says, "I send your soul into the mists. I send them back into the bowels of hell." <laughs> Uh, I, I well, walk done, creature. Done. I walk in like graciously as he's finishing his work and greet him with like a holy greeting for, for servants of Lathander. You know, the, the light of the morning Lord warms us all deep in our souls. Uh, when he sees you and turns to face your direction, that's when the vampire spawn seizes the opportunity to pounce on him. I thought he was done killing it. That's why I came in. I didn't want to him. <laughs> oh, I thought you were done. There's this moment of distraction where he turns to you, uh, uh, um, uh, f- uh, sort of uh, his tinted spectacles kind of askance or askew on his nose. And then the vampire spawn seemingly uh, seizing that moment, even in his in kind of with its, it's been beaten down, uh, doesn't seem to have much left, but seizes that moment to jump on the old man and literally takes him off his feet. I uh, avail myself of this vampire and try to attack it. All right. Oh, allow me. You can make two attack rolls against it while DF uh, (sighs) finally reach the sarcophagus. Right. I can like feel its... You can feel its pull. Evil power emanating from it. Yep. Oh, don't be evil for me. Fucking hell. I'll be fine. Boo, <laughs> <laughs> um. I'm a ghost. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, scary. I'll, I'll remove one of my gloves. Okay. <laughs> Done. And again, speaking to this entity within the sarcophagi. Um, even kind of almost even like kind of with a whispered voice, like I'm having just a one on one conversation with this. Mm-hmm. Do what you will with me. As so long as ret- his tricks is returned to what she was. Oh, it's too sad. I submit. No. Nope. <gasps> no! Onto the sar- sarcophagus. It says. I am Sadoom, the corpse star. I offer you the power to raise the dead. Do you accept this dark gift? Do it. <laughs> <laughs> I submit. All right. Uh, Paulton, as you see, as you watch Diaf, uh, you see um, him just shrivel before your eyes and become this emaciated, gaunt, ghoul like thing before you. Oh, no. no. And yep, yep. DF, in that moment, you feel this wash of horrible, horrible power, unimaginable power surge through you. Uh, and you're, uh, you just feel this blinding white light fill your eyes, uh, this painful, painful starlight. 
and uh, you instantly sense that you have been invested with tremendous power, not only the power to raise the dead, but the power to raise the ancient dead, if you so wished. What? Um, but you know, you know that it, uh, um, this, you, as soon as you receive the gift, you know that once you burn that power, once it's gone forever. So it's a one-time thing? Yep. Cool. And when you sort of look at your hand, it is just sort of shriveled and become very thin and bony uh, and uh, kind of horrific. And you see that seems to have affected your um, entire self. Everything is terrible. Yep. Okay. So do I innately have, since I'm able to control this power? Yes. You basically have the ability to cast the resurrection spell once. And it works regardless of how long the creature has been dead. And it doesn't require any of the, uh, well, actually, um, it works regardless of how the creature has been dead. After it has been used once, the dark gift vanishes. However, there are still huh, some things you need to know in order to, things you need to have in order to cast the spell. Oh, come on. <laughs> Um, because resurrection, the spell, um, requires a diamond worth at least 1,000 gold pieces, which the spell consumes, and you would know this. That's what we call in uh, evil terms, fine print. Cool. Yep. So while you can use this power, now you know that you need a 1,000 gold piece diamond as a component to cast it. I got one of those. Hold on. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay. So knowing that, mm -hmm. um, do I still, am I, do I, do I feel anything physically weird about myself? Like, uh, you, you, feel, you feel as healthy as you did moments ago, albeit imbued with this tremendous power. Um, your appearance has uh, suffered. You've taken on this sort of corpse-like appearance, and frankly, you could easily be mistaken as an undead creature at this point. But apart from your appearance, you feel fine. You feel as alive as you were moments ago. Awesome. What the hell happened to you? <laughs> Mistakes, Bolton. Mistakes. So, so I know it, knowing that I need this material component, I'm going to go towards where Evelyn was into that treasure area. Mm. I'm going to start ransacking that bitch whilst keeping careful mind of the terrifying invisible. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> whilst keeping that in mind, yes. Yeah. Evelyn, uh, how did you do on your attack? I got a 13 and a 15. The 15 hit. And I'm divine smiting the heck out of everybody. So yep. three, uh, 11, 15, 20. 20 points? Mm -hmm. All right. You decapitate it. I do that and then I um, flick the blood or whatever gore off of my axe nonchalantly and set it yep. down on the ground and say, sorry about that. I didn't mean to distract you. Thought you had him. Uh, you can see that he um, kind of struggles a little bit to get to his feet. He kind of, uh, he first thing he does is he sheaths his sword um, back into its uh, cane, its wooden cane. And then he kind of uses that cane to pull himself up to his feet. And he says, you did well, very well. I know, thanks. My name's Evelyn and you are? Evelyn, yes, I know. We've met. Uh, oh, sorry. I just, <laughs> terrible faces. Uh, w could you remind me? He says, when you saw me last, I did not look as I do now. I bore the appearance of a half-elf named Rick Tavio. <gasps> Rick Tavio? I, I give him a big hug. <laughs> he says, my, my true name is Dr. <laughs> Rudolph Van Richten. <laughs> I let him go. Oh, uh, Rudolph von Richten. Okay. Does that ring a bell to me for anything, any reason? Um, no. Rictavio was Dee's boss, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, so I'm like, that's real interesting. How's Dee? 
She is fine. He says, I'm here to help you reunite with her to take I, you from this dismal place. I would love that, but I was hoping maybe you might be able to help us because see, we have this dead friend. I'd love to bring her back from the dead real quick. And then we could go find Dee. Do you know how to resurrect people? He says, as it happens, I have a scroll of Ray's dead. That's fantastic news. <laughs> hurry, hurry, come here, come on. <laughs> No, we can <laughs> And that's when DF walks into the room. <laughs> uh, Evelyn, when you turn, you see something horrible has happened to DF as he enters the room. He is now this corpse-like figure. Do I even recognize him as DF? Oh, yes, but he looks like vampire. He looks like a ghoul DF. Um, oh. I just, like, I'm at work, so I can't scream. Otherwise, I would do like a... <laughs> What have you done? I like run in right behind about to. <laughs> Don't worry. It's oh, you met. You saw. Okay. Never mind then. Carry on. I, I, when I see Paulton, I go, You. Oh, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> you did it. And I start stalking toward him. <laughs> I knew it. And tears start streaming down my face. You give us back, Paulton. You give him back. You give it back now. It's like. <laughs> throw a thing of wine at her and run <laughs> when he does that it stains my cloak and I'm like ah, ah. <laughs> uh, DF as you quickly as you survey the treasure piles um, uh, looking for anything that might be gem like yes uh, 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 just make a perception check okay <laughs> <laughs> I would be pissed if I was you too I am really good. It was That's really cool. dramatic and good. I'm not gonna I'm not I'm not gonna metagame this. This is how it is. 27. All right. Um you do not see anything uh that looks you see one of the piles has a number of gemstones on it, but uh just a, a cursory examination suggests they're not hugely valuable like they might be worth 50 gold pieces each or thereabouts. And a lot of the other treasure uh, has like gold or filigree or it's um, ingots or uh, chalices and uh, there's a, a gilded skull with red garnets for eye, in its eye sockets but those red garnets obviously aren't di diamonds um, uh, basically and there's pieces of jewelry uh, that look like they might have uh, quartz and other things in them uh, but again a cursory inspection doesn't reveal anything diamond like you'd have to seriously dig through the piles um, in order to possibly find something. Uh -huh. uh, the old man in the room turns to you and says, Diaz, what have you done? Almost kind of like, uh, I'm like, I don't even focus on the fact that he knows who I am. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just so very focused on helping Strix. Yeah. Like, it almost kind of like, I'm listening uh, desperation kind of looking through the treasure piles just like okay what i had to and uh, I'm, I'm sorry. okay so you're actually going to start digging through yeah, a pile just digging and, through just anything all right at that point in time you hear the invisible construct animate there it is <laughs> and by this time uh paulton you have sort of withdrawn from the room and you so uh, but you can hear this heavy stomping noise as the invisible construct you can hear it clearly come out of the alcove and make its way toward DF. Now, uh, Evelyn, uh, you had a chance before to try to recall Barmy's command words mm -hmm. for controlling this thing. Uh, did you want to attempt that again? Yeah. Okay. In that case, make an intelligence check. Uh, uh, it's a 10. All right. Uh, that is just exactly what you needed. Um, DF, you feel this heavy lumbering thing almost looming above you, and you can see this faint distortion um, in the air uh, where it stands, uh, but it stops and does not attack. Thank you, Evelyn. No prob. Stay there, Amber thing. I gotta kill this Paulton impersonator. <laughs> Hurting my friend. I'm in the other room just like, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> you see Evelyn enter the room. <laughs> right. 
keep digging through for uh, yeah. diamond. What are you looking for? Diamond. A big this one. is no time for being greedy. Shut up and help me. Why? Uh, I start looking, but I don't even know what I'm looking for. I'm like, okay. he asked for help, so I'm kind of helping, but I don't really understand why. He said, uh, the old man says to you, D.F., you're seeking a diamond. Why? For Strix, so I can bring her back. Oh, don't worry. We got that covered. He's got a resurrection scroll. Isn't that great? He says, it's a raised dead scroll, actually. Yeah, that. That's not the same. That is not the same. Well, what's long, the difference? How long has your friend been dead? Not long. Ten minutes, tops. Then this scroll should work. Yay, let's get to it. Come on, come on, come on. He says, but if I use this scroll, we can't tarry here. We must get back to my wagon and leave this place now. We must go back to my tower. D How long would that take? To get back to the tower. Yes. He says, we will need to make the ride down Solanka Pass. That sounds great. We want to get out of here. He says, in the wagon, it could take a couple hours. Tops. <laughs> Tops. Why does that matter, D, if we want to get out of here? Also, again, what happened to you? <laughs> um, okay. He's made a pact with the dark powers. Why did you do that? We didn't even have to. Thank you. I'm sure I'm sure that Rictavio here can fix that as well. Let's just get Strix alive and let's get out of here. He's taken the first step down a dark path of corruptibility. Well, let's just help him untake it. Let's lay on some hands and we'll do some blessings. Says there's no way to undo the curse of the dark powers. <sighs> Not even divine intervention itself can save him. Are you sure? Because I had a curse and we just removed it just a minute ago. Maybe Barmy could remove it. He says... Anything is possible. Right, exactly. We'll get Barmy. We'll bring him to. We'll get that book that shows how to remove a curse. I think Strix did it, so she probably remembers. It's great. No, we, we must alive. get back to the tower. Okay, that's fine. But let's bring Strix back to life, and then she can undo the curse. It'll be great. I will bring her back now. Thank you. Take me to her. I like take his hand. And I'm. All right. I, I yell ahead like, Palton better not be there when I get there." <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, when uh, Van Richten sees Strix, uh, he uh, opens up his tan leather overcoat, pulls out a wooden scroll tube, unplugs it, and pulls out a piece of parchment. Then tucks the scroll tube, uh, caps the scroll tube, puts it back in his pocket, and then kneels down, uh, sort of with the help of his cane, next to Strix's uh, lifeless body. As I pass DF, I like gingerly pat him on the bony shoulder and I'm like, don't worry, you'll be fine. <laughs> Strix, you're in the mists walking with Jesper. You see uh, once in a while you stumble upon an occasional ghostly phantom of what you assume to be some Barovian who died X number of days, weeks, months ago. Um, they, most of them barely acknowledge you and uh, Jesper uh, has not released his uh, tight grip on your hand, um, uh, but he seems at ease in your presence. And he, in this time, he's told you some things. Uh, so uh, he is from uh, Valaki, and he has uh, a father and a mother and three sisters, all older. He's the baby of the family, and he got sick um, and uh, was being tended to uh, by his sisters. Uh, and then uh, he fell asleep and woke up here. I'm kind of like just singing a song, just like absolutely like do 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 snickety snicks in a bit, and it's really scary. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, you you feel uh, strict something almost like tug on you, uh, like try to uh, pull you out of this reality. Uh. Um, and. Uh, Uh, you then start to dissolve before. Oh, gross. Um, okay. Discorporate and become insubstantial, almost transparent. And as you do, you see Jesper, he, he loses his grip on your hand. 
I'm like, it'll be okay. Don't you worry. I'll, I'll, I'll find your family. And you, you completely fade away. And when you open your eyes, you're staring up at an old man in tinted spectacles. Ah! That you don't recognize. Uh, you also see Evelyn looming over you. Ah! Can I like? I'm looking like this. I was gonna spider climb <laughs> like that. It was like. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> right. And as you gauge your surroundings, you see you're in the room with the amber sarcophagi, uh, those wooden, co- those wooden uh, boxes have all shattered. Oh, you see Paulton. You weren't expecting to see him. Last oh. time you saw him, he melted into a puddle of water. I'll yeah. scream at him too. Like, ah! <laughs> Yeah, that's about how today is going. So I know I've been brought back. Like someone has brought me back. Yes. Okay. And the uh, rest of you, as uh, Van Richten cast the spell from the scroll, the scroll just sort of disintegrated into his, in his hands, uh, leaving no trace of itself really behind. I give him a like heartfelt thanks. Like I touch him on the, the arm yeah. and I'm like, thank you so much. And then I uh, run up to Strix and I'm almost about to hug her, but then I like remember how bad she smells and that she just was dead and also has cobwebs all over. So I'm like, and I kind of like, <laughs> like pet her cheeks and I'm like, I'm so glad you're back. Strix is just gonna be like, uh, what happened? I'm relieved, but I'm staying back because I'm weird and gross now. (laughs) Well, um, you were a little bit dead, but don't worry. Uh, we found Octavio, remember D's boss, and he had a uh, raised dead spell or a scroll, and so he brought you back, and that's great. There's a little problem with D. He's like, what happened? It's it's okay. He just, uh, he was. It's really sweet, actually. He really wanted to bring you back from the dead. And he kind of made a little bit of a deal with an undead pal. No! Just, no, don't, you don't know. Where did he... I'm just going like, to start yelling, like, where'd you go, Diev? I'm going to beat you up. And it's, But it's no big deal, because you can remove curses. Remember, you uncurse me, you can uncurse him. Easy pay me. Uh, the old man who brought you back from the dead, Strix, says, we don't have any time to waste. We must save this cursed realm from its dread lord. Fine. It takes like two seconds. She uncursed me in like two seconds. You can, she can just uncurse it. Yes, I can try that. But this guy seems like he's really mad. I'm going to point. Can we, can we try that? <laughs> yes. Is that an option? Probably sooner rather I'll than later. Up, I'll go up and just try it really quick. I'll try remove curse. Okay. This no effect. Great. Do you feel any better? No. You don't look so bad. <laughs> you gotta... <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> Here, she'll like take her like like a hood and just like put it on him like a little like All right, yeah so yeah, I, might, I might actually i might actually need one of those <laughs> she has like three cloaks on she'll just hand you one of them <laughs> <laughs> yes and she's so, like there that looks now, so much now better. you've got this black moth-eaten cloak or this grayish black moth-eaten cloak draped over you uh is there a little kid here i met a kid nope yeah Diet's only like 18 years old <sighs> um, i'm sorry d if i've just ruined your life haven't i <laughs> Things haven't been great, no. I yeah. uh, I asked for Octavio, I'm like, if he's if he made this deal with this power, uh, is it do we need to worry about making sure that it's still contained in there? He says the vestige will not escape that prison. Well that's oh, good. good. Okay, well you said you had a way out of here. It sounds like that would be the best thing we could possibly do. Strix, do you still have uh, that that book of spells? We might need that before we go. Oh, you mean the one, uh, I can try and find it. Let's if grab that on our way. I'm gonna ask Barmy first if we can find him. I, I don't wanna just take his things. I mean, he's, he's dead, but he's not like, you know, he helped us. That's true. I don't right. wanna be deadest. You're right. We should not be, uh, we should not exercise our living privilege that way. All right. Uh, when you go upstairs, you make your way back to Barmy's chamber. You can see that he's still there, kind of absently standing around. And say, hey, hey Barmy. Uh, yes. Oh, gosh, I feel bad t- asking for his book. He's done so much. I'm sorry we couldn't restore your mind, Barmy. <laughs> I, I know you really wanted wanted it, but is there any way that you could just, you know, maybe help us out a bit? Give us, like, a, a couple of pages out of your book. He says, a, c- a couple pages? Yeah, Why? 
to, you know, to, to, to blow stuff up and, and make the fire and show. And save the world. Look, look, he's, dead. he's already given up. The book is mine. All right. Are you sure? Can I try and like persuade him? <laughs> he says, the books can't be taken <laughs> from the Amber Temple. Oh, so they actually can't be taken out of here. Sure. <laughs> sure I don't believe you, Parmy. <laughs> you, you haven't been solid with us this entire time, and I was dead. So that either book you- is mine. <laughs> It has my name on it. Is that your name? What's your I name? think so. <laughs> I'm done. I don't care. Strix is just going to walk away. Okay. <laughs> I don't care about him. I don't care about his book. You know, whatever. <laughs> Maybe he can now start asking for spells from whoever the hell cursed him. Well, that went well. Bob yeah, Army. Paulton. <laughs> Strix is very mad. That's not right. Paulton, by the way. It is Paulton. How do you know? He smells like wine. We'll see. <laughs> and then I follow Von Richten. Or, um... Okay. Um, uh, he sort of <coughs> you back uh, kind of along from actually um, uh, uh, from here. Well, actually, it probably occurs to you that you'll be able to leave here more safely with Barmy's help, um, since he can lead you through chambers and not provoke, you know. That's true. Repercussions. <laughs> oh, right. uh, so, Bar- so Barmy will escort you as far back as the main entrance. That's where uh, Van Richten tells you he came in. And when you get there, you can see that something, you don't think it's him, burrowed or clawed a passage through the avalanche, snow, and wreckage. Like a big thing? It, it must have been something fairly big. Um, it, it looks like that whatever made this crude tunnel leading out uh, did so just by plowing and digging through the earth. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> did it uh, crawl outward or inward? Uh, no, inward. So it, if, if you, but you don't see it around, so, hmm. Right. I look at I look at Rictavio. Yes. I say, do you know what made these marks? Yes. Was I it did. you? I thought so. You a werewolf? He says, no werewolf can do this. You wear something? <laughs> he says, I'm afraid not. I hunt werewolves. But, and well, other monsters too. Good thing there's no werewolves here, none. Are you, but you're a little you're a little man. He says Yes, and you're a tiefling, and you have the key to help us put Strahd away. Wait, me? I was just dead. I'm pretty much useless. Where's my rat? Oh, he's here. <laughs> Thank you. He says, up through the tunnel now. Let's go. Uh, could you explain how you made this hole, just real quick? I don't think he's going to, Evelyn. Shut up. Pretty sure we're supposed to. We should. We should leave. We should leave. Here, Dieth. I'm giving Dieth like another blanket. Thank you. <laughs> I'm like, here. You want some for your hands? Yeah. <laughs> Around your hands. All right. I got my gloves. You need more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in to your question, Evelyn, he says. I captured something, you see, and had it locked away, but no longer. I released it and it made this. Now it's out there somewhere. Yeah, time to go. All right. Okay, let's go. So you can stay here if you like, but I don't recommend it. Uh, just, I like big creatures and stuff. I like to hear about them. So maybe you can I like leaving. Me. Yep. Okay. All right. Hey, when hey, you hey, climb hey. up through, the, you crawl through about 50, 60 feet of tunnel before you break the surface amid uh, snow and what appears to be uh, falling, freezing rain. And you can see parked about 30 feet away is a wagon. Uh, and on its side, uh, you can see a sort of faded but once colorful uh, paint job uh, that says Rictavio's Carnival of Wonders. 
Oh, I recognize that wagon. You can see strapped to the front of the wagon is a gray mare. And uh, the back of the wagon's doors are thrown open and you can see some chains lying in the snow nearby. Oh, so that's what was in the wagon. It's one of his circus thingies. Oh. Yeah. Well, maybe on our, on our way, you can tell me about it. He says, yes, of course. And uh, he says, everyone pile in. But I, I just make certain that there's no way we can be locked in it as soon as we climb it. <laughs> okay, when you look, uh, you can see that uh, the doors don't have a, the, the locking mechanism was broken off long ago. It used to have chains sort of crisscrossing over them to keep the doors from being forced open from the inside. Now that those chains have been removed, the doors, they sort of hang closed, but they easily swing back open again. There's nothing to restrain them anymore. Okay. And I unless just, somebody actually sort of holds them on the inside or puts some sort of rod or something against the inside uh, handles, they're probably going to flap and bang okay. as you travel. Do we have one of them right up front with them? One of us right says, up with them? Uh, yes, there, there is room for one uh, rider up front with him. Right up front. Right. Not it. I volunteer to. All right. Yes, so uh, Paulton, you'll sit up front um, while uh, Van Richten takes the reins and uh, he says Drusilla's name and Drusilla the horse immediately turns the wagon around and makes its way away from the Amber Temple, which from the outside you can no longer really see anymore since it's literally buried under tons of snow and rock. You just see that hole that was dug. I lean out of the wagon and I'm, I ask about the direction that we're going and whether we're going to go past that like archway thing with the fire and the <laughs> where we left our horse are we going to go by that yes you're exactly right we're going that way oh that's Down great pass okay good i'm sure valentina will be fine <laughs> yes you'll be able to reunite with valentina yeah uh and actually he mentions when last i saw her she was doing just fine Oh, that's Yay! I knew it. It's the only piece of good news we've gotten the entire yep. time we've been down here. Uh, so this guy, Paulton, does not spare the whip. You, as once you get uh, start going downhill and gaining speed, he just keeps going faster and faster and faster, as fast as old Drusilla can go. And uh, the rest of you are just like clack 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 in the back, <laughs> being jostled around and banged around. And the the benches you can sit on are not very comfortable, and you're kind of knocked back and forth, and banging <laughs> up against each other. Uh, wow. Paulton, you're like grabbing onto the seat like this. <laughs> I want to get off Van Richten's wild ride. Uh, yeah, he's just going like an absolute madman. And as you round a corner of the mountain, you see uh, this great stone bridge expanse in front of you with these arches that have uh, the mounted knights on top of them charging toward one another. You crossed this bridge once before. Um, and uh, you, you reach one end of the bridge and you begin to make your way across and he does not slow down at all. Um, he is just, and he doesn't take his eyes off the horse or the path in front of him. Uh, uh, he's, he's sort of following the ruts that he left coming up uh, in the snow and using that as a, as a bellwether to stay on the road, which is only about 15 feet wide to 10 feet wide in some places. And then it drops off a cliff. But when you get to the bridge, you can see it's sort of, there's a wind uh, you can feel it, Paulton, uh, blowing through you, cutting through you, really, because it's so cold. Um, and there's freezing ice and snow falling in the air. Uh, and you move across the bridge very, very quickly. And I'd like you to make a perception check. 18. You, um, even over what sounded like a, sort of a weird disturbance in the wind, uh, suddenly sounds like giant flapping wings. Oh, Fuck. <laughs> Come on. That Come thing on. is still and around. As, as you reach the midpoint of the bridge, Paul Ten, you are not surprised when you see a gigantic bird. Huge. Monstrous. It has like an 80-foot wingspan and claws as big as the wagon on which you sit. Um, comes peeling down out of the, the ice and blustery snow, claws outstretched toward you and the wagon. You are not surprised. And you're the only one in your party who could see this threat. And Van Richten doesn't even see it. <laughs> what do you do? Your phrasing of, you're not surprised. It's like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Here it comes. 
can I can I quickly like yell and convey this? Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> what do you say exactly? Big Bird, come to get us. <laughs> the rest of you sort of hear from inside the wagon this muffled voice saying, "Big Bird, come to get us." <laughs> And Strix is like, oh, shit. (laughs) I'm like, oh, no. (laughs) All right. Uh, The bird makes an attack roll against the wagon. Oh, Oh, this is why the ride is wild. (laughs) Yeah. I want to get off. Why can't it be Van Richten's really calm, nice trip? <laughs> it involves no hazards. Van Richten's peaceful road trip. Also, yeah. Deeth is a corpse. Uh, yeah, they've been this way before. All right. Uh, so, um, uh, Paulton, I would like you to make a dexterity saving throw as one of its claws grabs down, um, hooks the wagon. Those of you who are inside the wagon see these giant bird talons pierce the wood. Uh, One of them sort of comes out right next to your head, Evelyn. Uh, This claw sort of bursting through Ah! the wood right by you. Uh, Paulton, what was your dexterity saving throw? 11. Okay. Uh, The bird grabs hold of the wagon and lifts it up off the bridge. No, 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 Uh, no. Paulton, you um, are kind of thrown from your seat, but you do, if you so wish, roll well enough to hang on to the wagon if you want. But I'll leave that up to you. I'm going to try and hang on to the wagon. All right, you do. Um, And I have to make a roll for Van Richten as well. Uh, Van Richten is knocked off the wagon. He just sort of slips and kind of, Paulton, you see him disappear under the wagon. Uh, like you just, wagon you turn, as soon as you sort of regain your hold, you just sort of glimpse part of his overcoat, <laughs> flash out of you, and then he's gone. Are we still, uh, are we being lifted too high for me to change my mind and let go? Uh, uh, you can let go if you want. <laughs> Welcome right. to D&D with Chris Perkins. <laughs> and they can't see me hanging on, can they? No. There are no windows in the wagon. Okay. I they might hear you like kicking against its sides once or twice as you brace yourself, but uh, can you gauge how high we are. Uh, even in the blustery snow, you can see that you've only at this point been lifted maybe ten feet off the icy bridge. I, I can't. Okay. See. No, I'm gonna let go. Okay. Uh, just make a dexterity acrobatics check for me to see how well you land. Um, 16. Okay. Uh, you, you can sort of land like a cat on the icy bridge. Um, the rest of you inside the wagon get instantly get the feeling that the wheels have left the ground and everything sort of swings outward to one side and you're kind of thrown against one side of the wagon and bounced back against the other. And you can see that this great monster has its claws sunk in deep. Is there anything that you guys would like to do in this brief briefest of moments um i have a reaction of hellish rebuke okay so i can go ahead and just hit fire on the talons sure that's so, that's good so I was like, ah! <laughs> all right <Get> <laughs> uh make uh do your thing okay i think i have to uh yeah it's a, a creature must make a dexterity saving throw that's right okay uh okay it's got plus four roll and it rolled a natural two, so it failed. Ah, yes, take that. So it takes 2d10 fire damage. Excellent. That's right. Mean, 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 mean pants. Uh, eight and eight. Sweet. Wow. Uh-huh, All right. 16. It releases the wagon. Yes. And I cast, because the wagon, the wagon, it drops onto the, the bridge, right? We're right above the bridge. You don't know. Oh, okay. You're not sure where the wagon is. You just felt it come up off the ground. Okay. I did it good, though. Let go. 
Good job. And you could tell that you were on the bridge because it got a lot smoother. You just sort of hear the clunk, 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 clunk of going across even stones as opposed to the rough dirt trail. We're dead. So what I'm trying to do in whatever sequence makes sense is yeah. I want to make sure that we're like above something solid and are not going to plummet to our doom and then cast command on the creature. And okay. Currently you can't see the creature. Okay. Um, because uh, it, it is outside of the wooden cube in which you are now contained. So as soon as we hit the ground or whatever, I'm going to try to get out. Okay. DF. I'm chill. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can't exactly do right, that. Paulton, I'm sorry. Uh, and Strix already took, her, took a reaction. Okay. Uh, Paulton, mm. you see that when the... the now, from your perspective, being on the bridge, uh, you see that when the rock swooped in from the side and grabbed the wagon, it sort of picked it up and scooched it up over the edge of the bridge somewhat. And then you see it reflexively uh, open its talons and drop the wagon. Uh, but the wagon does not completely hit the bridge. You see that its back end uh, tips over and its front wheels become lodged against the uh, decrepit stone riser at the edge. So if you imagine a car or any vehicle where its back end is hanging like this, off. It's like an action movie. I would need, uh, and you see the horse is on the bridge still and its weight is sort of sliding its hooves across the ice on the bridge as it's pulled uh, in the direction of gravity. Ah, I um, can fly. So at this point, I would like uh, those of you inside the wagon to make a dexterity check. Because what happens next is the wagon tips, the back doors just flop open and you see just a gorge, a wind blown icy gorge below you. Can I, can I use my flying boots to assist their dexterity checks? Like grab possibly, one of them if they possibly, fall. but everybody still has to make the saving through, including you, Anna, because you might go tumbling out of the wagon before you even think to activate your books. Okay, sorry. Does this gorge look weirdly familiar to me? Yes. No. <laughs> ah, shit. Uh, I rolled a fourteen. Okay. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Strix. Got an eight. Oh. No. Okay. No, no. No. All right. So we just the first. First thing that happens is uh, um, Evelyn's able to grab one of the benches and Diaz able to brace himself up in one of the corners uh, very ably. Uh, but Strix goes sort of tumbling asses over elbows out and <laughs> falls out of the back of the wagon. I dive after her. No, it'll be fine. I can turn into a clown. <laughs> As she's falling, she's just gonna turn herself into a cloud. It's fine. <laughs> Don't worry about me. Save yourselves. Uh, Paulton, you're up on the bridge, and you see uh, this horse coupled to this wagon. Uh, you see the stone um, that this wagon is braced again begin to just sort of crumble and break apart. What do you do? Oh, and you can also see uh, Van Richten. He's sort of lying down um, alive on, uh, on the bridge about five feet away from you. He sort of fell on his face um, and narrowly avoided getting trampled. Um, from the quick glance I take at him, does it look like he's like lively enough to get up and make a break for it? Or does he look pretty messy? He looks, he looks momentarily kind of stunned and out of it. Okay. He's, a, he's like an 80 year old man, so. <laughs> okay. Um, then I'm gonna, mm, what do I, uh... uh, if you did absolutely nothing, you think that eventually the weight of the wagon would pull it and the horse over the edge. <laughs> Save the horse. <laughs> yeah. That's, um, I'm gonna go over to, I'm gonna go over to the horse and the carriage and, Promptly make a quick decision. <laughs> oh, specialty. <laughs> um, Wait, maybe don't disconnect the horse since it's connected to the wagon. And it's, <laughs> maybe don't do that. 
Maybe don't do that. <laughs> oh God. I literally have, I can't, I can't do anything. So it's just the horse hanging on with the carriage. Yeah. The horse is, the carriage is half hanging off the bridge and uh, kind of gradually uh, causing the bridge under it to uh, collapse and break away. And the horse being literally tethered to it is just kind of being pulled with it. What's the? It's but the kudos to the horse for you know having the fortitude to keep to keep its yeah. legs and good horse. Yeah, What's the material of the the carriage exactly. Is it uh, the carriage is primarily made of wood, uh, bolted together with iron rivets and things. But it's it's largely a wood construction. You can't break that open. Uh... Its only access point is at the back, which is not easily accessible at the moment. Right. I'm going to. Oh my god. I'm gonna call and be like, "Who's left in there?" <laughs> <laughs> you get no response, apparently. <laughs> it's just Diaz. We're uh, Strix and I are fine. Oh, it's just Diaz. Okay. Less urgent. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I got this. Uh, can I bardic inspiration to him to help assist whatever decision he may make in the near future? Such a supportive friend. I assist you in whatever decision you want to make. That involves not falling. Indeed. Um, yeah, the answer is yes. Uh, you can do it. Because you only, uh, he only needs to be able to hear you. Okay. Oh, absolutely. I play a very encouraging tune for him. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so, so music busts out on the bridge. Uh, Diath, you feel especially uh, yes. inspired. All right. And uh, that allows you to add a D8 dun, 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 dun. to a roll. <laughs> Great. All right. Uh, so at this point, Evelyn, what are you doing? Uh, I want to fly out of the carriage and try to help like grab the horse's halter and pull them back onto the bridge, like help guide the horse back onto the bridge. Oh, okay. So you fly up out and around and grab mm -hmm. the horse. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, you can easily get out of the wagon to the horse, uh, grab a uh, hold of it. And uh, I'd like you to make a strength athletics check. Oh, come on. Strength is like my highest thing. And I roll a two. Ooh. So I, I mean, that's a six. Yeah, you feel the horse moving in the other direction, um, the, the, the direction you don't want the horse to go. Uh, you're unable to really gain any ground with it. Can I, do I, I that's my action, right? I don't have time to do it. That's, that's right, that's okay. your action. And uh, Strix, you're plunging toward an icy river. Whee! <laughs> Whee! <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna cast my, uh, my, my uh, cloud spell, what's it called again? Gaseous form? Yes, gaseous form, yes. All right, Pure cloud. Yeah. Which makes me very upset because I was just in the mist and I just really don't <laughs> like it. Really, that's true, yes. Uh, so I'll just float back up. All right, um, um, I'll let you make a perception check as well. Oh, good, I can see our good birdie friend is there. That's a six. Okay, you do not see the giant bird. Right. And there's the, the the sky is all it's full of ice and snow and wind and it's just it's hard to see very far, um, and it's it's dark so um, you you see no sign of the bird whatsoever but you do see the bridge above you you do see the wagon hanging precariously, um, and uh, that's all. Right, I'm just going to zoom up there. A few pieces of stone from the bridge fall past you as you make your way up, and some of them just fall right through you. Yep. Uh, and uh, DF. Yeah. So now that my theme song is playing, yes. Uh, so I, you said I was braced up from in the back of the wagon, right? Yeah. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to let go, so I go straight towards the back of it and grab yep. onto the top side of the door where there's the little ledge. Yep. Yeah. Kick my thing, feet out as I go out to swing up and around, land on top of the wagon, and then run up and leap towards the bridge. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, just make a dexterity acrobatics check for me. You got it. Love acrobatics. 21. You execute the maneuver perfectly. Ha! Flip up right. freaking sweet looking. And I'm sorry, <laughs> did you want to land on the bridge, on the horse, or somewhere else? I can't remember what you said. Uh, onto the bridge. Okay, you do. You spring onto the bridge. Cool. Right next to Paulton. 
this is an action movie I, as I leap off the wig and goes down at the same time. I'm like, oh. Now that's technically all movement for you. So if you want to take an action, you may. Great. Uh, I look for a bird. Is there one? Uh, make a perception check. A perhaps large size. Uh, 17? 18. Yes, you do see uh, the silhouette of a great uh, monstrous bird, um, but it is now about 80 feet away from you and seems to be flying away. Yeah, you got rebuked. He the did. fuck, bird? <laughs> Not so easy pickings after okay. all. Okay. Um, am I close enough to either cut whatever restraints or reins or whatever is keeping that horse onto the wagon? Yeah, I just need you to make an attack roll. Okay. I'll do that. Uh, 25. Because some of the restraints have been uh, so so strained that uh, they're, they're really sort of taut and they're, they're becoming frayed. Uh, so you have no trouble hitting it. Roll uh, damage. Uh, I don't know how much that's going to do. Seven? Uh, yeah, you you sort of take you break away uh, half of it. Uh, um, uh, the horse is still attached, uh, but uh, what's his face hasn't gone yet. Um, so seeing if he can help you out. Otherwise, it looks like he might lose his horse. I'm, I'm trying real hard. We've already lost one horse. Yeah. <laughs> But only one. Valentina lives. Yep. I was betting she wasn't going to, so. <laughs> I never lost faith. Of course. I would hope not. That's kind of your thing. <laughs> That's interesting. That's true. That's a good point. <laughs> interesting, <laughs> says Chris Perkins. Bear with me just for a quick moment here. <sighs> Trix is just like floating up as a cloud, like, dude, dude, I'm a cloud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. Uh, he casts a spell, um, and uh, he goes over and touches the horse as he does it. Um, and uh, you're probably not sure what spell he casts, but Evelyn might have a sense because it is a it is a clerical spell. Uh, would you like to make a religion or arcana check, Evelyn? Sure would. It's the spell of last rites. My horse. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. I will make a religion check. Yep. For 15. Okay, you believe it's a freedom of movement spell, oh. uh, which is a, 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 a higher level spell than you can cast. But one of the things it allows a creature to do is escape from non magical restraints. Perfect. Uh, so the horse just miraculously kind of slips out of everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, the whole. Uh, wagon and everything else disappear over the edge of the bridge. That was me. I did it. I have saved the horse. Yep. <laughs> well done. Yes, and I thank you. I'm going to, can I float behind uh, the erected and just like come back? Like, <laughs> yes. I'm just going to get behind and be like, oh, hey! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Over that. Uh, yeah. Jack and guys, the end. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we will pick up the game next week live at TwitchCon on mm. Saturday, October 1st. So no no game next Tuesday? So no game at our regularly scheduled uh, Tuesday next week because we'll all be recovering from a, a week-long uh Anna will be recovering from a week uh, yeah. from TwitchCon. <laughs> and the well, rest of us rest of us will be flying home. Yeah. Wait, don't we have a Tuesday between now and TwitchCon? We do, uh, but Chris is out. Uh, Chris is out. Yeah, I'm out because I'm, that's and right. Then, no. I'm my bad. So next week, next week there's no game because I'm on vacation. The week right. after that is TwitchCon and we play on that Saturday. Right. Which means the uh, Tuesday after TwitchCon, we are not playing. So we've got uh, our next game is the TwitchCon game. Yeah. And, which uh, will be streamed live? Yes. Oops. Yes. yes it will. Yeah. So you guys can still watch. Yes. Hey. Yeah. And, and guest star Erica Ishii will be joining us. Yeah. And do you have, now you have to change your entire cosplay. So. No. That's <laughs> no. fine. Remember me how I was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my God. All right. 
so the waffle crew is reunited yay finally I, that went a lot less worse than i thought it was gonna go for me personally mm. but yeah. way worse for, for oh, I mean, yeah. all things considered at least we're all alive and we're together so yeah. let's, so let's yeah, yes, to yes we can't say that oh well yes poor poor little guy i yeah. mean he's dead though Alton should have been there. He's the one that's good with kids. That's true. It's true. <laughs> I should not have been there. <laughs> you did fine. All right. Uh, any announcements from you guys before we call this episode a wrap? Uh, just a reminder that uh, there's an official Dice Camera Action subreddit. Yes. Now, so if you want to join the discussion and the community and all the really cool things that are happening there, just go to the subreddit. Uh, just, I think it's just Dice Camera Action. Right. Yes. Oh, I do want to thank people who have been doing the awesome art. We've seen oh, some yeah. really terrific art. Um, fan, art's, fan art's been amazing. Oh, yes. It's mostly of all of us dying, but, that's, you know. That's the real talent there. <laughs> I want, like, a book of it. It's so good. Yeah. 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 yeah so keep doing fan art, please. Yeah. And, Anna, do you have misclicks tonight? Yep. We're right. playing right after this at 6 p.m. on uh, Twitch slash M-I-S-S-C-L-I-K-S. Right. And also watch all of TwitchCon. It's going to be amazing. September 30th through October 2nd. There's like yeah. seven different streams you can watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In, in addition to one, in addition to the live game, I'm doing a, a, I'm joining a panel. So that'll be fun. I'll, I'll tweet more information about that in the coming week. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Hey. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thanks for watching. TwitchCon. Hey.